Thanks for joining us. Today, we're talking about syncing zaps and zap loops. That's something that you want to avoid. But what do these mean? Well, that's a great question, so let's dig in. Zapier is an asynchronous tool by design. That means we specialize in one-way transfers of data. For example, send a Typeform response to Google Sheets. That's a one-way transfer from Typeform to Google Sheets. Now, that said, if you use the right combination of triggers and actions in your apps of choice, they might actually offer the possibility that you can create a synchronous, which is a back and forth connection between two apps using Zapier. For example, both Salesforce and Google Contacts have triggers and actions that involve triggering a Zap from and creating new contacts. That means you could set up a two-way sync between these apps. Whenever a contact is created in Google, we can create one in Salesforce and vice versa. This type of syncing or arrangement isn't traditionally something that Zapier is designed to support. While the above Zap would work the way you'd expect from Zapier, there are a few extra steps necessary to prevent complications from using Zapier this way. If you ever want to make a Zap that creates an object that another Zap triggers from, there's a chance you'll create a looping condition, where the action of one Zap triggers another Zap, and the action of that Zap triggers another Zap, and then the action of that Zap triggers another Zap, and you get the idea. This is a Zap loop. And in order to avoid this, you'll want to implement some anti-looping logic. That'll let you keep this synchronous connection, but prevent one zap from triggering the other zap's ad nauseum. The way to do this is with a filter step in your zap, looking for a unique string that you add during the create contact process in both zaps. For example, if you add the word Zapier to an unused field in a contact record, you can use this piece of information to tell your other zaps, never act on a record that has the word Zapier in this field. So long as each create contact action contains Zapier, we can use a filter step to stop the run of a zap, should any new contact contain it. This means your filter will prevent your other zaps from running on an object, in this case a contact, that you created from the first zap, and vice versa. It's rare that two apps will offer you the necessary triggers and actions to make a synchronous connection possible, but as long as you remember to add a way to prevent loops, these sorts of integrations are possible with Zapier. Now it's time to get out there and build some synchronous zaps and test it out. Remember to add a filter step, and just as importantly, a unique string in an unused field. Check out our resources below, and we'll see you next time.